Hey guys, let's go over some cards that have been going up in price. Pretty much everything Commander 2016 is trending upwards every single day. I expect to see this continue until Commander 2017 comes out and then people are really interested in whatever the new tribal decks are, including a five color dragon tribal deck. I'm still a little... It's interesting how that dragon the dragon cards got spoiled it literally was somebody who found a deck list somewhere and that was it you got the actual cards and then he began to spoil them one by one obviously spoiling the good cards first and yeah it's always very curious how this happens because if you did have knowledge beforehand it would be very easy for you to corner the market on let's say a reserve list dragon card right you go on the reserve list, pick out the dragon card, and buy for two bucks, and then it, it will be more. Anyway, Commander 2016, as you can see from this, is the one thing that is really going up in price as a trend. Everything else is kind of hit or miss. Even cards that are reprints from Commander 2016, they have, I don't, this might be a combination of low supply or lower supply, but I do feel like there's actually a higher demand for cards that are in Commander products. Uh, mainly because they're newer, they're not, they're in good condition. A lot of times they're better conditioned than perhaps an older card. Uh, let's say the Act. The Act was printed in Innistrad. So it's really hard to find a near mint, a gem near mint Act. But in Innistrad, but in Commander 2016, they are all gem mint. Also, the unique cards have been trending up, which is something in Commander 2016, which is something that I've talked about in the past. Commander is just where the value is. Um, we don't have value in Standard. Modern's kind of stale. Standard, I was just watching the match uh, at the last Pro Tour. It was Averwork Marvel versus um, Black Green Tokens, or Black, yeah, I think Black Green Tokens, it plays the Walking Ballista, as well as the Nissa. That's pretty much whatever people have been playing for the last year. That's Those are the two decks that I have been seeing do well after the banning of the Guardian. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about obvious picks, like picks that are like really obvious and they just take time. So one of the picks I knew would be valuable, it doesn't show you the chart on this card, but I did play Betrayers of Kamigawa. I was in high school, I bought lots and lots of packs at Radio Shack, because Radio Shack always had a deal where it was like free packs for $10. And at that time I was working, I worked all summers and part time. And my friend worked at Starbucks, I worked as a salad bar manager, and I would always take my paycheck and take half of it to buy magic cards. So that paycheck in summertime was really high. Well, high for me at the time. So I'd always buy Betrayers of Kamigawa, Saviors of Kamigawa, Champions of Kamigawa, and everyone in those, that was not a good time for magic. So these cards that we're looking at today, Betray, like the, the gallery, that was like a penny card, right? That was a card that no one wanted, no one could see the point of it. Obviously, it's super casual, but at the same time, it's just something that I, I couldn't imagine would be valuable, but then EDH came out, and it became really obvious that, wait a second, there is this casual kitchen table which actually controls the price. Out of all the Magic players, I would say 90, 95% of the Magic players never go to f and buy products from Walmart. I'm sure Walmart sells way more products than any local game store in terms of volume, like your local Walmart, because they're always stocking and restocking. And I mean, they restock every once a week at my Walmart and my Target, they restock every once a week. And it's always like interesting stuff that gets restocked. My local game store has does not restock until like the new set comes out. Okay, so back to Commander. So Commander is... It's super casual, but that's where the price point is. There's no arguing that Commander has seen more shifts in terms of prices than any other format. And the prices are generally very positive. The trend has been very good. 
And I, I've always felt that when Commander products first came out in 2013, I was in Richmond, Virginia, doing an internship at a patent law firm. Yeah, a patent law firm. And it was a pretty cool summer. My friend was a reporter. Or he actually, at that time, was training to be a reporter at a local news station, actually a national news station. And we would play Magic. And the new Commander products came out. And at that time, that was our kind of our first introduction to Commander. And we just had so much fun playing it. It was a fun... It was fun. And that has never stopped being fun. That is different from Legacy. Legacy has, for me, stopped being fun because of the cost. The fact that you can... I can afford two decks, and each deck is over $1,000, but I can't really substitute the deck out, and there's no testing, right? So in Commander, if you want to test a new card, just take a card out, put the new card in, and test it. It might be great, it might be bad, but you can continue to test, continue to evolve. In Legacy, you have a best deck list. You have a Tier 1 deck list, and if you don't follow that deck list, you're not optimal. The same can be said for Modern. There are deck lists which do not encourage you to play new cards. They actually discourage you because if you were to run something slightly different, you would be blown out. That's how Legacy is. That's how There's very few rogue decks in Legacy that will take down consistently Tier 1 decks. The Tier 1 decks or have been the Tier 1 decks for a very long time. Force of Will has been Force of Will for the longest time. Now, when you move in modern, it's a little more you know, flexible in terms of what you can do, but it's not as flexible as ED8s, right? ED8s is just so, okay, do you want a Hannah Ship Navigator? Does it work? I don't care. Try it out. Okay, didn't work. Let me try something else. It encourages you, you to try new interactions, and that's super important for any card game because it doesn't become boring. Hannah Ships the Navigator, I do want to take a little bit of time. Um, when is the best time to buy Commander cards? Not when they first release. As you can see, Command uh, Hannah was a $12 card when she was first released. That actually happened. Now, another card that has just continued to surprise me is this one. Mm, I do believe it's going to be reprinted sometime soon because all sideboard cards are on the slate to be reprinted. I'm not, I know a lot of you are saying, oh, Rest in Peace is a good investment. Maybe for now, but I really expect it to be reprinted sometime. The policy that sideboard cards should be 10 or in Blood Moon's case, $40, that's a, not a great policy because it doesn't feel good to spend that much money on a card that you sometimes play. But you have to have it in your sideboard because when you sometimes play, it's very good against the decks that you play against. Uh, Cannonless is something I, I've always liked. I've actually commented in previous videos many times that I many times that this is a card that I can see a very bright future for. Barring obviously everything I say is barring the unpredictable reprint in some product. I like it. It's always been a card that I have favored. I play in Land and Taxes. I also play in the White Weenies with the Philias. I'm getting new Philia Alters, so I'm pretty excited for that. It's been a while since I got physical Alters. And overall, my gut feeling tells me that this is it. There's no more price rise. It is an $18 card. Modern Masters is such a good set value-wise. I know we reviewed the Uncommons and Commons, but... In addition to that, you have rares and stuff, right? The mythics are worth a ton of money. Okay, another trend I have seen is not just Commander 2016, although generally Commander 2016 has been trending pretty hard up right now. So if you cannot find the Commander decks, I have them in my local game store. They, they are selling for MSRP, except for the Atraxa one, which is selling for double that, so like $60, $65, $70. And Walmart, so Walmart has them still. Not the good ones, but they still have just random commander decks. I don't know who stocked my Walmart, but we still have the foil shards of Alora packs. You know, those all foil cards, we, uh, booster packs, we still have them. And they're just like kind of beat up and damaged, I don't know. 
I don't know what the policy on my Walmart is, but there is a lot of times people are opening products and just leaving the product. I think they just take the rare and then just leave the stuff there. But they're always like restocking. They restock at least twice a month that I know of, but possibly every week. I just don't go to Walmart every week, so I'm not positive. But they restock all the time. I, I know they restock because they always have like different promos and the free booster. They have such a wide selection of products now that's quite amazing. But yes, they have plenty of ED8 stacks. And more to the point, they actually have um, Zendikar versus Adrazi, which is a very interesting big up because it has Adrazi Temple, which is a $10 uncommon. And that's the uncommon. <laughs> okay, so back to the point. Let's wrap this up. When you see a card and you say, huh, this is a card that was, looks like $250, $3. Let's call it $3. It looks like maybe a little less. You know this card is going to be valuable. And you know this card will keep going up in value, just like Chromatic Latin. What do people want to do in EDA? They want to draw cards. They want to gain double life. It's pretty obvious that this mythic in Origins would be continue to trend up until one day it's a Chromatic Lantern $10 card. Barring reprint. Some cards are just so obvious, you have to make a move on it. And a lot of what I've been saying is for ED8. ED8 is a very obvious format. Go big or go home. Doubling, any doubling effect, including Anointed Procession, is good. And will go up in price. And that's it. I mean, what else do you guys want to know? Like, Instead of drawing one card, you draw two. Instead of gaining X life, you gain two X life. That's the definition of ED8. <laughs> anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below what cards you want me to do next. And yeah, I actually do read the comments because I did Tezzeret. Tezzeret was a comment from a subscriber. I normally wouldn't have done Tezzeret. I did some looking for decks. I didn't find any decks on Tezzeret, but... His price point was so low, I, I just was like, wow, I'd never... A, t a Planeswalker named Tibble being under $2 just doesn't seem right to me, even with the overproduction of Magic cards, especially where you have the other Planeswalker in the set at $20 to plus dollars right now. Anyway, that is it. Oh, there's a, another Planeswalker. There's the Nissa too, which is meh. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.